Hello, I'm John McElroy, the Deputy Editor of Auto Express. We all know it's tricky at the minute to get into showrooms like this and prod around what could be your next new car, let alone get behind the wheel of it. So Hyundai has asked us to come and give you a sort of a virtual test drive of this, the all-new i20. Now, it might seem strange for a car manufacturer to ask a journalist to give you a verdict straight, but that's exactly what I'm going to do, because we wouldn't agree to do this unless we could be completely impartial. I drove the very first i20 in the UK, this car in fact, last autumn, and we also group tested it against some of its main rivals. And there's nothing I'm going to say here that isn't already in those articles. Let's start by having a good look around the i20. It's a super mini, so it's basically a rival for the likes of the Ford Fiesta and the Renault Clio, and I'm going to try to provide a little bit of context with those models. If you're a Clio owner, this car's about a centimetre shorter and a little bit narrower. If we're comparing it with the Ford Fiesta, it's three centimetres shorter, but a little bit wider. Crucially though, the wheelbase of the Hyundai, the gap between the front and the rear axles, is a little bit longer than the Ford's, and that has benefits for cabin packaging, as we'll see later. As for the styling, it's definitely more striking than the old i20, which was a little bit anonymous. More dramatic front headlights, a complex front grille, and some detailed surfacing along the sides. The overall effect is actually quite sporty, even though this car is an entry-level version, so it sits on the smallest wheels in the range. Round the back, you get this black plastic to help break up the metal in the tailgate. And notice here you get rear parking sensors and a rear-view camera a standard even though this is the entry-level version. Some of this car's rivals will charge you four or even 500 pounds for that sort of feature. As for the boot, there's 351 litres in here. That's a little bit less than you get in a Clio, but it's around 60 litres more than you'll find in the back of a Fiesta. If you do need to carry a longer load with a rear passenger, you can do so. The rear seat folds down in a 60-40 split. There's room in the rear cabin here for a couple of fully grown adults, even of my size. It's here where the Hyundai's longer wheelbase pays off because while the headroom is roughly on a par with the rest of the class, there's definitely a little bit more leg and knee room in the i20 than there is in some of its rivals. Would you go three up in here? Perhaps, but probably not for a long journey, though that's possibly the dividing line between a car like the i20 and a fully sized family car. Let's have a look up front. The layout in here is completely new for the i20 and it's smart, neat and functional. There aren't a million buttons all over the place, but there are conventional switches that matter, such as these physical dials for the heating and ventilation, which is more than you get on some other super minis I could mention. There are also buttons here in the steering wheel that allow you to control major infotainment functions, such as adjusting the volume or flicking onto the next track or radio station without having to reach across. The overall effect inside is smart and neat rather than flash. This central panel here could probably do with a bit of grain or texture in the plastic. It looks a little bit plain to me, but there are padded materials in all of the areas where you're likely to rest an arm or an elbow. There's no fault in the tech either. Hyundai's got some of the best infotainment in the business, and it's great to see how it's filtering down onto smaller models. Every i20 gets this 10 and a quarter inch digital instrument cluster as standard, and here, high up on the dashboard, exactly where you'd want it, there's an 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system that is a really slick and easy to use interface. It doesn't have mapping, but it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, so you can always use your smartphone for navigation instead. Should you go for one of the higher end i20s, by the way, a premium or an ultimate, this will be swapped out and you'll get a 10 and a quarter inch system in here, which does have its own navigation. If you're wondering about oddment space, the glove box is a decent size, the door bins are big enough for large bottles, and there's a useful tray down here in the bottom of the centre console, along with two USB charging sockets. It might not be quite large enough for the biggest smartphones on the market, though. So that's the i20 inside and out, but you clicked on this because it's a test drive, right? So let's take it out onto the road. Regardless of which trim level you go for, there's only one engine option in the i20 at the moment, at least until the N and N lines versions turn up later this year. It's a one litre, three cylinder engine producing 99 brake horsepower and 172 newton metres of torque. Similar figures to what you'll find in some of the big selling Clios and Fiestas. Where Hyundai has been a bit clever is in its use of 48 volt mild hybrid technology. The i20 gets an integrated starter generator and a small lithium ion battery. Again, technology that's usually reserved for more expensive cars. And it's all designed to improve performance when required and give you an efficiency boost when possible. 
What you end up with in everyday use is an engine that pulls sweetly from around 1500 RPM up to 3500 revs, by which point its best work is done and the dashboard display will prompt you to shift up a gear. Speaking of which, the transmission is pretty trick. You can get an i20 with a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic, but this car has a 6-speed manual, what Hyundai calls the intelligent manual transmission. It's quite clever in that it doesn't have a physical connection between the clutch pedal and the clutch. Instead, it uses a sensor and then activates or deactivates the clutch itself. It sounds complex, and I suppose it is, but what it means on the move is that the car can cut the engine out on the fly when you're cruising along, even when you're in gear. And of course, when the engine's not running, it's not using any petrol. You should get around 50 to the gallon in real-world use, perhaps even a little bit more than that. Does this change how you drive the i20? Not a bit. There's a little bit of an electric boost as you pull away and then you just shift gear as normal. You won't really feel the engine cutting in and out because the transition is incredibly smooth. All you'll notice is the needle on the rev counter jumping up and down. This i20 sits on a very heavily modified version of the old car's platform, but it's so different it might as well be all new. The car has benefited from the input of a man called Albert Bierman. He used to be head of BMW's M division, but now he's the man responsible for all of Hyundai's vehicle dynamics. Now, Bierman's a keen driver. I know this because I've sat beside him testing other Hyundai's on UK roads, and there was no way he was going to settle for a sloppy chassis. And it shows. The i20 really is one of the sweetest driving cars in the class now, with crisp turn-in, quick, responsive steering, and body roll that's kept really well in check in the corners. The trade-off for this is ride quality that's probably at the firmer edge of the spectrum for the class. But while there's the odd bump and thump over poorer surfaces, there's really not much here to split the i20 from the usual driver's super mini, the Fiesta. In fact, when we tested the Hyundai against the Ford head-to-head -head and on the same roads, we actually felt that the i20 was a teeny bit more comfortable. The smaller wheels on this entry-level edition may have helped a little bit with this, though, so we'd check carefully before going for a posher version on larger alloys. We've liked the new i20 since the first day we drove it, and that's not about to change here. There are some stellar super minis out there, like the Fiesta and Clio, but with this generation of i20, Hyundai really has a car that deserves to be considered right among them. It's spacious, good to drive, refined and practical, and it probably has the best infotainment system in the whole class. It's definitely worth the four-star rating that we've given it, and when you take into account the PCP deals, the deposit and the monthly payments, it also undercuts quite a few of its rivals as well. Sounds like a win-win to me.